So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, depending on from which place have you joined this webinar. Uh, today's webinar is all about Financial Force PSA Basics. Uh, I am Neeraj Gurg and I am the Chief Operating Officer at Abli Pro. Uh, and I lead a team of 300 Salesforce and Financial Force consultants who are actually providing consultancy and managing services to our global clientele. Abli Pro is a Salesforce and Financial Force registered consulting partner. And uh, uh, we have, we give these educational webinars based on our knowledge uh, to educate everyone on what's best in the market, uh, maybe understand like what are the basics for each of the products so that uh, you can maybe if you're in the implementation stage of any product or you are in the uh, you are planning to implement that product or PSA, uh, it can help you out. So let's see what we have for the agenda for this webinar today. Uh, we are going to actually first understand uh, the flow between the marketing team and the services support. Then we are actually going to find out the need for the PSA between these services. And once we understand why PSA, uh, we will actually get into the PSA business processes overview, PSA ecosystem. Then we will talk about Salesforce objects financial force objects and the different roles in PSA. And at the end, we will try to give you a small peek into how to create a project in PSA. So before I move further, I want to launch a quick poll uh, to understand like at which stage of PSA cycle are you in? So let me launch this poll and if you can just let me know which stage of PSA cycle are you at? So are you planning to switch to PSA or are you in the process of PSA implementation or you might have already implemented PSA and working on user adoption? So either of these three options. So let's give it another 15 more seconds. Uh, to get a feel of where we are in terms of PSA. Okay, so I think we have got the results. Uh, we have got 68%. Okay, we are still getting the results right now. Okay, so we have got 70% who are in the stage where they have implemented PSA and working on user adoption. We have got 15% who are in the process of PSA implementation and the rest 15% who are planning to switch to PSA. So that's interesting. And I think uh, for those who are planning to switch to PSA, I think uh, we need to understand why we need PSA, what benefits uh, are derived if you are planning to switch to PSA. And I think let's start from the very basics. So let's get the ball. And before I start uh, a few housekeeping tips. Uh, so this webinar that we are doing here, it will be recorded. Uh, and uh, it will be the slides and the recording will be emailed to you after the webinar. Uh, everybody will be on mute, but uh, you can always post your questions in the Q&A chat box and I will try to answer them as I go along, right? Or maybe at the end. And uh, obviously, uh, a big thank you to attend this webinar, first of all. Uh, hope you find it useful. So let's get started. So uh, before we understand why we need PSA, it's important to understand the uh, cycle 
that every organization goes through right so if you if you see this funnel this funnel actually represents uh, right from the marketing stage till the customer support so and this is how typical every organization works so so what your marketing team does is you your marketing team actually is the part of funnel 1 where you attract and acquire leads now your marketing team can actually acquire leads by seo paid search social media or any kind of blogging or maybe any other activity okay so that is how the leads are acquired by your marketing team okay and then you actually use different tools maybe maybe use pardot or maybe any other marketing automation tools that actually uh, helps you engage and nurture your leads so how do you engage and nurture your leads it may be that you send them uh, your product brochures you send them web links you send them your website links or a white paper and you record your score for that lead so an as an example uh, you send an uh, invitation mail to one of your prospects and he opens the mail so you can assign a particular score to him and then you can keep on assigning scores to him maybe plus 10 plus 20 depending on what activity he does with the things that you are sending him maybe he visits your website you assign him 10 points he fills in the contact us form you assign him 30 points and that is how you know what your leads are interested in and uh, that is how your marketing team nurtures the lead okay so marketing team may decide that once one of my leads actually scores maybe 50 points or 80 points i will consider that lead as a matured lead uh, and pass it on to the sales team so they filter out the matured leads and pass it on to the sales team as qualified for sales and since sales team knows the history of the leads from the marketing uh, research or marketing initi initiatives that we have done for that lead it is easy for them to uh, close those leads because they have a background of those leads they are not just calling them and say that buy our product they actually know uh the interest of the lead how they have come into a uh, picture and then obviously it's easy to converse with them and close that so one and two are the marketing uh, initiatives that your marketing team does by attracting and acquiring leads engaging and nurturing leads and then they pass it on to the sales team as qualified leads okay and then sales team talks to them creates opportunities and then they close an opportunity now as soon as you close an opportunity right so it passes on to the project delivery team because we have closed a deal right and then you have got the work that needs to be delivered so you pass it on to the project delivery team where they create a project they budget it out based on what you have sold to your prospect and then deliver it within quality and time okay and once the project is delivered obviously the customer will need support and that is where the customer support team comes into picture okay so this this is the whole funnel that every organization follows where your marketing team uh, nurtures your lead attracts the lead passes on the qualified lead to the market to the sales team sales team closes an opportunity passes it on to the project delivery team where they deliver that project within that time frame and budget and then once the project is delivered it moves to the customer servicing or the customer support where we support them uh, continuously or for whatever period we want to and that is how it works right now let's understand the various tools that are involved in this uh marketing to sales to project delivery and the customer support cycle okay so for the quick reference we have got this funnel that we talked about in the last slide now 
the one and two, which is the attract and acquire leads, engage and nurture leads, that is done by the marketing team. Okay. And that is actually most of us, if you are using Salesforce, you might be using Salesforce Marketing Cloud, or maybe you may be using a different platform of maybe Pardot, right? So this is where the marketing team comes into picture and they use everything. They use the marketing Salesforce Marketing Cloud to get the marketing activities done. Okay. And once the leads are nurtured and matured, they move to the stage three, which is pass on that lead to the sales team and sales team, since they are on sales cloud, right? Uh, they will create an opportunity in sales cloud. They will close the lead there. Okay. And then you move it to the project delivery team where obviously you need to manage that project within that time and budget. So you may use different tools uh, for project management. You may use Microsoft project. You may use Zoho project. You may be using Zira and uh, maybe in Excel and uh, invoicing, maybe in SAP Anker. So different project delivery tools you might be using. Okay. And then when the project is delivered, you move it to the customer servicing team or the customer support team, which is on the Salesforce service club. Okay. Now, if you, if you see this clearly, right? So this blue path, right? That is all Salesforce platform, right? From Salesforce marketing cloud to Salesforce sales cloud and to the Salesforce service club. Okay. But this project delivery that we are doing, that is not on the blue path because we are using different tools, which are actually not Salesforce tools. Okay. So everything is there on one platform, but we have a missing link, which is the project delivery, which is not there on the Salesforce platform. Okay. So it's not, so your marketing till customer support is not seamless because we have got a gap here, uh, because we are using different tools in project delivery. And that had been the problem, uh, which was identified by financial force. And that is what they came up with a solution uh, of bridging that gap and developing a product called PSA, which is the professional services automation tool. Okay. And since financial force PSA is built on Salesforce platform, it is easily integrated with the Salesforce platform. And then if you use PSA, then it bridges that missing link gap of project delivery. So what happens now is that your marketing team is on the marketing cloud. It passes on the leads to the sales team, which is actually on the sales cloud. And then they close that lead. And as soon as they close an opportunity or a lead, that project is automatically created in the financial force PSA. Okay. And uh, everything in terms of project management, in terms of resources, in terms of invoicing, uh, everything is managed within PSA. And once that project is completed, you can pass on the details to your service team, which is on the service cloud. So it's one blue platform all across, right from marketing till the customer servicing stage. Okay. So it's a, it's a seamless experience for you. And what you benefit out of it is that every information that is passed on from marketing cloud to sales cloud to project delivery to customer servicing is stored in one platform under one umbrella and every information you need, it is there as single source of truth for you. Okay. So you exactly know that your project was closed for $40,000. So the budget is $40,000 for this project delivery. And since project delivery is managed in PSA, it's integrated with the sales cloud. So your sales team can exactly know how the project is progressing, whether it's in budget or there are issues with it. And then these teams can seamlessly talk to each other and get the work done. Okay. 
So that that is where PSA fits in, and it's very important to understand for everyone who wants to switch to PSA to understand the business objective derived out of it. Because unless you have a business objective and you don't understand why we need PSA, uh, you will face a lot of problems in user adoption. Okay, so this is this is the complete cycle. I think we have got a question here. Let me see what that question is. So we have a question from uh, that we are in the implementation stage. What things should we keep in mind? Okay. So I think if you are in the implementation stage of implementing financial force PSA, uh, it's very important that you take care of the user adoption right from stage one. Okay. And when I mean you take care of the user adoption from stage one, I mean that you should involve your business stakeholders and the actual users who are actually going to uh, use the PSA system right from day one and get the inputs from them. Because if you don't involve them right from stage one, uh, they are not going to understand the system, and uh, it it would be it would not be a seamless experience for them, and then they are not going to adopt the system as well. So it's very important to get a buy-in from the users at every stage of delivery. Okay. So hope that answers the question. Now, uh, once we have understood what PSA is and why do we need PSA, let's understand uh, the basic objective of PSA, what it does. Okay. So this, this uh, diagram actually gives you a complete picture of what PSA does as a business. Okay. So now you have got opportunities in Salesforce, okay, which are closed by the sales team. And as soon as they close the opportunities here, uh, a project is created in the PSA. Okay. Now, once you create a project, there are two types of projects that you can create uh, within PSA. You can create either a fixed fee project or you can create a time and material project, which is based on the resources. Now, fixed fee project is something where you have got a fixed price associated to it. So like an example, you may say that your sales team closes a project for $50,000. So as soon as the project is created from that opportunity, you will have a budget assigned to it, which would say that this project has a budget of $50,000 and you have to deliver that project within that budget. And obviously since it's a fixed price project, right, you will have different payment milestones or milestones attached to it, uh, which can be uh, phase one, phase two, your phase one could be the design stuff, phase uh, two could be actual development and then deliveries. So and every milestone will have a payment associated with it, which will actually go to the billing cycle, right, and get built. So this is for the fixed price projects that you have. Then you may have projects in which the scope is not clear and uh, they say that we want a certain amount of resources with certain skill sets uh, who can do our work. And that is where you need to identify what kind of resources uh, are required for that project, what skill set is required. So it may be that you require uh, a resource, two resources who are actually very good in business intelligence, maybe two resources who are required for testing, maybe one project manager, uh, one operations manager. So everything in terms of resources has to be planned here. And depending on their rates and everything, they are assigned different tasks. And when they're assigned tasks, they will actually fill in the time uh, for those tasks. And based on their rates, uh, you will actually uh, bill your clients uh, the number of hours that they have worked and the rate per hour that has been charged. So uh, you go, you have projects, then you do resource planning, resources get assignments, they do the work, they do their time entry, and then 
their time sheets are approved by the user manager. And once it is approved by the user manager, they go for billing. Similarly, uh, your resources may have other expenses, like they may visit client site, uh, they may incur some expenses on that. And then those expenses again are a cost to your project. So it goes for manager approval and then the billing event. So this is the complete business process summary for PSA, and that is how it works. Okay. So the project is the key in PSA and everything revolves around the project, if you can see. So your resources, your assignments, your invoices, time card entry, everything is related to project. Then obviously, I think we have one more question here. Let's see. So, okay, so they say one of the questions is what is your take on PSA customization? So uh, obviously uh, any tool that we implement, uh, we should actually use the out of the box features for that tool and not customize that product. Because if you do a lot of customization, every new version that comes for that product for migration, you will have a lot of issues on it because you have written your own custom code, which is not supported by uh, financial codes. So it's important that you do minimum customizations. I think PSA provides all the out of the box features that are required for project management, resource management. Uh, and uh, it, it, there are times when the team who is actually implementing your financial course may, are, may not be aware of that. So it's better to uh, understand from them uh, that why are they doing customization for it. And from a business side, we should actually uh, totally avoid customization, right? That would make things easier for us. Uh, that would make things easier when we move to the support model and the support team does not have to uh, worry about all the customizations or support work that is required. Okay. So, that is the answer to that question. Now we have talked about the PSA business process summary where we were talking more about uh, how PSA works, right? Where project is in the center and then everything revolves around that. Now this is more about the PSA ecosystem on how PSA, Salesforce and the uh, other modules of financial force which are mainly billing central and financial force accounting are actually related. Okay, so like we have talked in the previous slides, uh, we have got accounts in Salesforce, uh, which have an opportunity in them, right? And as soon as an opportunity closes, uh, it moves to the PSA community. So you have account and opportunity in the post.com platform. And then as soon as the opportunity closes, it moves to the PSA community. Now, as I told you, PSA community is all about project management because project man project is at the center. Now for project management, you will need resources. So you will need resource planning for that, which is done in PSA. Obviously, since you are managing your project, you will have project financials as well, uh, because project financials are a key for your finance team to build your resources, to build uh, milestones for the fixed price projects. Then you have services billing for the services that you are providing them, services forecasting, resource planning. So the, these are all a part of the PSA community and all are related to the project delivery team, right? You need all these things in project delivery, right? Now, suppose you have got, uh, like we talked in the first slide, you may not be using PSA, you might be using Zira for your project management. Then obviously there is an out of the box connector for PSA, which integrates Zira easily with PSA. Okay. Similarly for resource planning, uh, before PSA, you might be using ADP. Uh, obviously it's again, there is a direct out of the box connector, which can actually help you easily integrate PSA with ADP. Similarly for your project financials, obviously PSA provides its own uh, project financial system, but if you had been using SAP Conquer, uh, you can easily integrate SAP Conquer with PSA. Okay, so 
these are the out of the box connectors uh, for PSA, which are easily integrable with PSA. And then once uh, you have done your project delivery, right? Uh, PS uh, Financial Force has got its own ERP communities for finance, which is the Financial Force Accounting for Accounting and Financials and Billing Center, right? So these are two other modules which uh, Financial Force provides apart from PSA for the complete life cycle. Okay, so this is how the PSA ecosystem looks like: uh, Salesforce, then Financial Force PSA, and then the Financial Force Accounting System. Okay. So I think we have got another question. Let's see what it is. So we have got a question from Andrew, which says, can you run reports billing from the assignment level? We have clients who are billed as certain aspects of the project are, are completed. Yes. So the question is, can you run reports and billing from the assignment level? Yes, you can run uh, reports and billing from the assignment level. And PSA actually uh, has a very good reporting system, which uses uh, financial force analytics, which is actually based on Salesforce analytics tool. So just check with your team uh, or your reporting team to pull in those reports at assignment level itself, because reporting is something which is available at all levels, whether it's the assignment level, or at the planning level or at the project management level. So you will have a numerous out of the box reports that are available in PSA. Okay. But even if you think you still face a problem, you can uh, contact us or email us and we can help you out with that. So hope that answers your question. And we have got one more question. Yes, thank you, Andrew. So obviously, reporting is a very important part of PSA. Uh, and since we are dealing with a professional services uh, automation tool, uh, reporting is there. And we have got a lot of reporting for your financial stuff as well. And uh, anyone who understands or are using a different system, whether zero or conquer, uh, just make sure that we have got out of the box connectors for PSA for doing it. Okay. Now, since uh, financial force PSA is built on the Salesforce platform, so it's a combination of Salesforce and uh, financial force. So there are some Salesforce objects which we refer to because like the opportunity, uh, because opportunity is there in the sales cloud, which actually uh, gets converted into a project in PSA, right? And the opportunity obviously is associated to an account, right? Because you will have an account with which you have an opportunity. An account is always related to the contact. Uh, obviously, there would be a contact person in that account. Uh, and then obviously product is anything that we're delivering. Okay. So these four are the Salesforce objects, uh, that uh, sometimes, or most of the times you will be referring to most of the times it's generally accounts and opportunities that, uh, you would be concerned with in PSA. And I think in the subsequent slides, we will actually, uh, show that as well. So we have got one more question. Let's see what that is. So the question is, can PSA be integrated with Zira as you have suggested? Yes. As I told you, uh, Zira is one of the out of the box connectors, uh, for PSA. So as you can see the project management, if you are, you are using Zira, you can easily integrate that with PSA. Okay. And you can, you have a connector for it. You can ask the financial force PSA team as well to understand that. Okay. So that is the answer to your question. So we have talked about the Salesforce objects. So these are the four Salesforce objects you keep on hearing when you start implementing PSA because opportunity projects are related to opportunity. Opportunity is obviously is an account. It's a product of an account. 
an account obviously has contacts. Then when we talk about PSA objects, so as I told you, PSA is all related to projects. So everything revolves around the project. Okay. So what is project? Project is a collection of tasks or work that has to be performed. Okay. So your project may have 100 tasks, 50 tasks, depending on what you have to deliver. Okay. And every project will have a milestone because if there is no milestone in a project, you will not have a definite timeline uh, to show your client. So milestones, as I told you, can be payment milestones or it can be your target milestones, which are associated to a project. Okay. So your project may have that I will deliver the POC in five days. Uh, I will deliver the business requirement documents in next 10 days. So these kind of uh, milestones can be there in project and they are a part of the project plan. Similarly, project task. Project task is a, uh, one of the tasks that is there in the project. So you will have specific work that needs to be done uh, to be completed on a project. And uh, that would come as a part of the project plan that you have. Assignment is something uh, where you allocate a resource to a project. So you may have five projects running and uh, they may have different requirement for resources. So every resource, depending on the skill set, would actually get allocated to the project. So as you can see in one, two, three, four, everything is around the project. Your project milestone, your project task, and resource allocated to a project. Right. So when, when a resource is allocated to a project, obviously he will work on that project and uh, he will fill his time card. So time card is important because you need to understand how many hours your resource is working. So it may be that you have engaged a resource for just 200 hours. So it's important to understand what he has delivered in 100 hours and what more time you require, right? So it's important and it's important for invoicing as well because you may bill your client based on the charge uh, time charged by the resource to a project, right? So again, it comes to the project. So time card is associated to assignment and associated to a project. And when you do time cards, you will have expense reports. Expenses can be in terms of travel expenses, in terms of other on-site expenses that uh, a resource might incur or food expenses. So expense report is a collection of expenses against our project, right? So everything would be against a project, whether it is time card entry, expense report, billing event, billing event, as I told you in the previous slide, uh, is associated to a project where, like, I can go back. So projects will have milestones and for delivery of those milestones, you will pass it on to the billing team, which is actually a billing event, right? Similarly, uh, everything related to billing will be a billing event associated to a project. So this is what it is, right? Billing event, a group of billable work on a project. So there can be two types of work. There can be billable work. There can be non-billable work. Okay. So anything that you are billing to the client, uh, is billable. Anything that you are not billing to him is non-billable. Okay. And then you have miscellaneous adjustments uh, that you have to do in your businesses uh, to adjust the incorrect data. Okay, so if you see uh, the PSA uh, objects, they are all related to project and it's because it's all about project delivery. So everything, whether it talk about resources, milestones, everything is related to project. Okay, I think we have got one more question here. Let's see what it is. So I think it's a question from Michelle for Michelle asks for fixed fee projects. Can we have only billings milestones or do we need time entry milestones? If we expect resources to track their time to need the project. So what Michelle is asking is for fixed fee projects, can we have only billing milestones or can we do time entry milestones as well? So that is a good question, Michelle. Uh, I think for, Fixed fee, for fixed fee projects, you can have both, okay? Because uh, it may be uh, that uh, your milestones are actually 
based on the work that has been delivered but you may ask your resources to do a time and material entry or uh, to fill in the hours that are required right so it may be that you may charge your client uh, $20000 maybe after you have delivered half of the project but for your own uh, budgeting you will need how many hours your resources have actually spent right so it may be that you are charging just $20000 as a fixed milestone for your project but your expenses on resources and their uh, expense report is more than $20000 so that will tell you that you are running negative uh, on your budget and you need to improve it in the next phase right so it would be a combination of both fixed fee and time and material fixed fee for your clients and for your internal process it would be time and material right because they would be filling in time sheets and logging in their hours right it's just for the billing purposes for your client that you are sending uh, payment milestones okay so it would be a combination of both in both the cases does that answer your question yes okay that's good so this is this is all about psa objects and it's very simple right to understand psa uh, if you revolve everything around the project okay if you just uh, understand about the project how the projects work all these objects that i am talking about will make sense right they they are like very simple to understand if you understand that flow and that is what why i say that when you are implementing psa it's important to make the users understand this flow right because they may think that you are implementing a tool which they don't know like what is in store for them but if you try if you involve them at every stage of implementation they will understand that this is nothing but similar to what they were doing before right because project management terms remain the same no matter uh, which project management tool are you using okay so projects will remain the same the milestones will remain the same it's just that you have implemented a tool and that too because it actually provides you seamless integration between marketing till project delivery okay so that is the whole purpose of using psa then let's move on so uh okay i thought i have we have another question but it's not that so let's uh, talk about the psa roles right so psa roles it's simple to understand so obviously since your uh, psa is built on a salesforce platform you will have someone called this sfdc system administrator and what this system administrator will do it it will actually create your psa org and use your and create your psa users into it right it will create psa managers user profiles and assign different roles so he's the main guy right sfdc system administrator because he's creating all the psa users and roles right and he's the one who is going to create psa administrator role okay what psa administrator will do he will actually help and set up psa administration he will set up holidays work calendars regions practices and group right we will talk about regions practices and groups not in this webinar series today but maybe in our subsequent series that we will have after this right but holidays are like holidays planned for the year work calendars time periods right these are all related to projects so this is something that psa administrator does then obviously psa administrator since we are talking about projects you will have a project manager role it's very simple project manager is the one who is managing the project right from end to end uh, he manages projects and sees that everything is in budget and we are delivering to a quality okay then project manager obviously will need resources for the project and that role would be provided by the operations or resources manager because your resources might be global okay uh, you may be working in us but your resources might be sitting in europe Uh, your resources might be saying in asia so it's the resource manager who actually maintains these these global resources sets different permissions on them sets their rate cards uh when a project manager requests a resource he will actually 
uh, assign that to a project manager depending on the resource availability, depending on the certification. So every resource will have different skills and certifications, different time zones. Okay, so everything is taken care of by the resource manager. Then obviously we will have a services manager and a delivery manager who will actually uh, manage all these booking, stopping, utilization, right? And make sure that uh, they are booked and we are uh, billing it properly to our client. Obviously sales, sales is something which is uh, related to sales cloud, but uh, it creates accounts and opportunities since we have got PSA and we have got sales cloud link. So sales is an integral part of financial force PSA. Then finance team obviously will generate all these billing events, sends invoices, uh, make sure that we are giving, getting sufficient revenue and uh, we are having our receivable cycle uh, is getting executed on time. Then obviously you will have internal resource, external resource uh, who are going to work on different projects, will have different skill sets uh, and are assigned to the projects. So it's pretty simple to understand uh, project managers, delivery managers, resource managers, your finance team, and the resources and rest is the administrators that we have. So these are the main PSA roles that we are looking for, not many roles, but if you understand the end-to-end -end project delivery, all these roles will make sense. Okay. And since we are talking about integration of sales team, finance team, project delivery team, that is why sales roles, finance roles will come into picture. Okay. Then I think, as I told you, project is the most critical part in this whole PSA tool. So it's important to understand how to create a project, right? Because everything revolves around the project. So unless you've got a project created, uh, there is nothing happening in PSA, right? If you've got a project, everything revolves around it. So I think in the next few slides, let's, I will show you how you can actually create a simple project in PSA. Okay. It's very simple. It will take just, it just takes four or five steps uh, to get into it. So as soon as you go into your home screen, uh, there is a search bar. You can click there and search for uh, opportunities, right? So either you can go to this search bar and search for opportunities. That is one way. Second way is there is an opportunities tab on your first page where you can click it. So either of these two ways. So either you click on opportunities tab on your dashboard. If you are not able to see it, but you should be. Uh, the second option is to go to the search bar, type opportunities, and you will see the opportunities here and you just need to click it, okay? Because you know projects are a result of opportunities. So when an opportunity gets closed to create a project, okay? So you have to first search for the opportunities tab on your dashboard. So once you click this opportunities tab that is highlighted here, what happens? You will just get a view of all opportunities, opportunities closing next month, opportunities closing this month, my opportunities, new this week, opportunity pipeline, recently viewed, recently viewed opportunities, services opportunities, one, okay? So different categories of opportunity. For this example, we have just taken services opportunity. So on this drop down, as you click on opportunities, select services opportunities, right? And let's see, takes up to the next screen. So here we can see all these services opportunities because that is what we selected. You may select any other opportunity, right? You may select uh, opportunity last one or opportunity close that week. It actually depends on you. But whatever you click, you will come to the screen where it will show you the filter type opportunities, the filter that you selected in the opportunities. And this screen will look like this, right? So. As we can see, we can have got an opportunity name here. And as you know, opportunity is linked with an account. Okay. And every opportunity has got an amount or a budget associated with it. Then the close date, then the stage in which stage it is. Okay. 
and the opportunity owner's name. Okay. So for this exercise, so we take these opportunities. We, for this case, let's take Abbey Groton uh, for this example. Okay. So we have selected Abbey Groton. And so you can select any opportunity and click it. Okay. As soon as you click it, you can see on the top, we have got an opportunity name, right? Opportunity name here, Abbey Groton, right? And then on the right, you have different options for these opportunities. Orders for this opportunity, sales invoices for this, sales credit notes if there are any. And these are all related to the sales stuff, right? Because it's still an opportunity. Uh, revenue forecast, revenue forecast, batch logos. But since we have to create a project out of this opportunity, we go to the project stuff, right? As soon as you click projects here, uh, you hover over this button. There are two different options that you will get. One, create project. Second, create project from template. Now, what is the difference between create project and create project from template? Create project will actually create a new project right from scratch, okay? Which means that uh, it's an entirely new project uh, which does not have any input parameters before that. But since uh, you may have got some project templates and you want to use it, you can use create project from template, okay? So what this create project from template will do is, it will actually allow you to create a project from the existing templates that you have, okay? Always advisable to create a project from the template because uh, in that case, it's easy uh, because you've got a set uh, set of inputs that you can get from the template. And uh, rather than just creating a project, unless you are creating the first project, that's fine, you can go with that. But always advisable to create a project from template. I think we've got one question here, let's answer that. Uh, we have got a question from Valerie. Uh, can you please explain to what specifically do you refer to when you talk about opportunity? Is it a potential client or a broader thing? So opportunity in sales term is something uh, which you think will close in the near future, right? So there are 80% chances that that opportunity will close, right? That is why you have converted that from a lead to an opportunity. Okay, now that opportunity in some cases may just uh, be lost or you win it, okay? But uh, opportunity is something where you see it as an opportunity to close it. Uh, and then you can obviously define the uh, success of that opportunity and what the prospects are of trading, closing that opportunity. But opportunity obviously leads to either closure or lost. Okay. So if you win that opportunity, it's one, then obviously you have got that project and you can create a project out of it. So that is why a project is created out of an opportunity, right? If it is a lost opportunity, obviously you don't want to create a project out of it. But if you're creating a project out of an opportunity, you get all the required information from the sales team uh, in terms of what skills are required to uh, create that project, what budget is there, right? So an opportunity may say that a client of yours wants three testing resources or few resources, right? At a budget of $10,000 each for every month. So you exactly know when uh, you create a project from a from an opportunity, all this data you can see, right? You can see these tabs here. That is all related to this opportunity and your project team can exactly see that, okay? And similarly, your sales team, when you create a project, can see the project that is being get, getting executed in PSA. So you will know whether your project is running on time, on budget, and uh, you've got the required skill sets that he mentioned to your customer in sales, okay? So opportunity in a wider team term means something uh, which you are hopeful of closing. Does that answer your question, Valerie? Okay. So we have got another question here, which says, 
is create project a uh, ff functionality yes uh, it's from shrimati shrinivasan shrimati yes uh, it's a financial force functionality what we are seeing here on this screen in terms of creating a project this is all financial force psa okay so creating a project is a financial force functionality it's not a sales force functionality you have to create a project in financial force psa and these screens that we are seeing they are all related to psa okay hopefully that answers your question okay so where were we yeah so we had two options uh, we can either create a project or create a project from template so in this example uh, we have taken the preferred approach and uh, let's see that we we select create project from template so uh, you may have a list of uh, project templates uh, which you can use uh, in here what we have done is we have filtered uh, projects templates based on uh all the project templates which have planned hours uh equal to 1000 okay so you can say i want to select project templates for all the projects which have a planned hours less than 1000 or equal to 500 right here what we have done is we have selected uh all the project templates where the planned hours are 1000 okay so we get all these projects here all the project templates here as you can see 3 month tnm uh, aud template right australian dollar template 3 month tnm gbp template so here we have selected services type project because we have got a fixed price project so we say it's a services type project fixed price uh, whose planned hours are 1000 so we select that template right say select okay do we have any questions here no that's fine so we select a project template because we want to have a fixed price template uh, whose planned hours are 1000 i select that and as soon as i select that because you can see here right it uh, auto fills some of the fields uh, automatically so since our account name was abe gotten so it automatically creates a project with the uh opportunity name okay because our opportunity name was abegrotten you can go and change it as well uh, that is fine we have got a start date which it took actually from the template start date it actually took the uh, end date as well uh, uh, and you can always go and change these dates depending on what dates you want here right since we had selected planned hours as 1000 takes it as 1000 it's a fixed price project because that is what we selected for it gives the opportunity name as abe gotten which is correct it's a customer size project it is active billable so it has filled in all the fields right because you selected a template so everything which was there in the template it comes as a uh, Pre-filled automated fields, uh, which you can obviously change. Okay, then obviously you have got resource requests from template, uh, uh, which were there in the template itself because the previous template had an architect role, a business analyst role, a consultant role, a senior consultant role, a project manager role. Okay, and uh, these were the requested number of hours. So this is all. define in that template right you don't need if you don't need it you just deselect them by default they would be auto selected right but if you think you don't need an architect just get rid of it you don't need a consultant just take it off you don't need a project manager just take it off okay so that is how a template helps because it actually helps you in uh getting all these records from the predefined template and then Uh, what you have to do is you just uh, once you are happy with the information uh, and you have done all the changes, you just go and click this button, create project, right? 
and that's it. So simple four or five step process of creating a project and it's easy, right? And once a project is created, then obviously you can do different uh, stuff with that project in terms of assigning resources, uh, getting their skill sets and everything, which we will obviously talk about uh, in our next webinar because it's uh, another topic that we have to take care of. But in this webinar, what I wanted to was just run you through on what PSA is, why we require it, what are the basics of uh, PSA ecosystem, what are the basics of PSA business summary, what PSA does, how PSA revolves around a project, what all systems you can integrate with PSA and how to create a basic project in PSA. Okay. So I think this is what we have for this uh, webinar today. And uh, if, and as I said, all this presentation and recording will be sent across to everyone who has registered for this webinar uh, and will be sent across to you. And if you have any questions still about uh, which have not been, you have not been able to ask in the question and answer chat, uh, you can call us at 240-259-3076 or you can email us at vcare at ablygroup.com. Once you receive these slides, you will have our contact information and we will try to help you as much as I can. And as I said again, uh, we at Ablypro hold these educational webinars just to make sure that whatever we learn from our experience we are able to share it and spread that knowledge uh, so it's easier for you uh, and you don't repeat the same mistakes uh, uh, that others might have encountered and we make you learn from it so uh, let me just once more see if you have got any more questions uh, so I think we have got one more question which says that do we need uh, financial force accounting along with PSA? So that is a good question. Uh, most of the users are confused about it. So PSA, which is the professional services automation is a different product of financial force. Financial force accounting, as I told you in the ecosystem is a different accounting product for financial force. But uh, these two are not linked. If you want to, and you want to do your invoicing and everything in financial force accounting, you are uh, happy to buy it. But if you are just uh, worried about project delivery and its integration, and you're using a different accounting tool, just stick with PSA. Okay. So that is the answer to your question. Uh, I don't think so. We have any more questions, but it's good that we have got a lot of questions. It's good to see everyone from different uh, spheres, whether they are implementing it or whether they are in the stage of implementation or have implemented it. I think you might have found the information useful in this webinar. And thank you once again for attend attending this webinar. Uh, we will have a series of these webinars in continuation that we have discussed today. Uh, in the next webinar, I think uh, we would be discussing more about resource management and how you can do it within the projects. Okay, but till then, keep safe and good night, good evening, and have a happy night. Bye bye.